Hi, Susie and Naomi. Hi, Sam. Oh. How is everybody today? This is Pip. <laughs> oh, hi, Lisa. Thank you, Zan. I'm hoping, I think I got a lot of the tears out for today. So, <laughs> waking up seems to be like the hardest. Okay, you need to, come, come cry girl. Come over here. Here, wake up. Good morning, Kathy. Hi, oh, there's two Lisas here today. Hi, Lisa. It's 10 minutes to two for you, so good afternoon. You're moving a little slow, stayed up too late last night. I feel you, Susie. <laughs> good morning, Samantha. <sighs> Kaylin and I did not want to go to sleep last night, and... So we stayed up very, like, midnight, kind of stayed up late. And I think I didn't want to go to sleep because I knew the morning, like, waking up is hard. Um, emotionally. Like, it's the hardest emotionally right now. Um, like, if I could just kind of skip that time... I'd be very happy, <laughs> or happier, I don't know. If I could not be going through this, I'd be even happier, but <laughs> that is not within my control, <laughs> so <laughs> mm -hmm. here we are. Today it's kind of like overcast. It looks like it rained, but it's not currently raining. Hey, Jelena. How are you? Thank you, Lisa. I'm just, like, really grateful for people who are, like, willing to hang out with me <laughs> just to help me, like, get through this. My aim really is to, like, move forward whatever moving forward looks like like always striving to be I don't know I can't really help how I feel right but I can help my reactions like I that's something I can do something about okay really pip come on please Look at any other window. Hey, girly. And so that's what I'm trying to do. Like, I'm trying to move forward in the things that I am able to move forward in. Which. Whew. 
can be hard sometimes. Hi, Bex. How are you? By the way, everybody, I think I know the answer to why sometimes I get glitchy or why there's sometimes a delay from me to you and back to me. <laughs> this Hopefully a solution is on its way and arrives tomorrow, but, or today, today's Tuesday, tomorrow, I don't know, I can't remember, it was late, but I talked with somebody and was like, what's possibly going on, like, here's the things, and I was given a recommendation, but I can't do anything about it in the meantime, I think. Good morning, Peroska. How are you today? You're tired, you don't feel good. Oh, I'm sorry, Peroska. Is it like you're sick kind of tired? Not tired, but sick kind of don't feel good or just like a different kind? Maybe after, yes. I mean, stress definitely affects everything. You just had to go see Terry the Terrapin again. Or just waiting for the car to warm up before driving home. It's one degree Celsius here. Yeah, that's cold. Oh, that's. I. I mean, I. I think that forty degrees Fahrenheit is cold. So, <laughs> um, I would definitely think that that's cold. Yeah, you're feeling sick, and yet you're not. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> I know exactly kind of that weird. It's kind of like, sometimes I'm like, I feel nauseous, but like, not like upset stomach nauseous. It's definitely from something else is affecting it. So I understand. And it sometimes feels like there's nothing you can do about that. Except to, like wait for it to pass. So, I'm a little shaky today, but I think that'll get better. Well, I'll like come and go anyway, but. I did eat some yesterday. Your symptoms sound very familiar, but you're very heavily medicated for it and sometimes a week in hospital. <sighs> I'm sorry, Zan. I'm very sorry for that. Going to the hair salon in about half an hour. There is something about like doing something um, that helps. So I hope it does. <laughs> oh, you know what? You guys are my medication right now. So that's, that's what, yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to go for right now. <laughs> and meanwhile, like, I will keep working on decreasing the emotional stress and 
like improving my my base you know I'm very brave to face this myself but I'm not Zan like I'm not alone that's the thing like I don't feel like I'm facing it myself like I'm facing it with all of you like hundreds of you um, and right now that's enough that may not be a like <laughs> per permanent solution <laughs> I probably should not go live hours and hours and hours every day but like this is my stitching like this is just I'm just bringing people along I guess hi Shauna good morning to you As long as everyone is healthy, you're good. <laughs> you have an eight-year-old and an eight-month-old. Oh, goodness. <sighs> yeah. It is the start for healing. I agree. And it's good. Yeah, it is. I think like some people have family that they turn to. Um, you know, parents or, you know, brothers or sisters. For me, it's you guys. Like, absolutely. Whoa, girly, you really have, like, today was, like, your second time this year in going outside. I mean, I suppose it's only, today's the 17th, but. I, <sighs> did it feel good to go out? Like, that's what I want to know. <laughs> did it feel good? I do have to regularly go out. I think yesterday I got to around 500 calories eaten. So, like, that's forward movement. <laughs> Obviously, not enough, but it took literally all day long to get there. Or close to it.
my daughter and I stayed up very, very late last night. And so I kind of don't expect her to be up until like noon. <laughs> I think yesterday she got up at like 1030. But we stayed up until past midnight. <laughs> so... <laughs> she's homeschooled, so it she's not affected by like a public school schedule or anything like that. <sighs> Hi, Beth. I do have a deadline for this. Um, I work on it every day that I'm not traveling. And I, like, since I know my stitch count um, that I'm aiming for, this this shelf, so you, you can see it's, there's four shelves and I work on it by the, each shelf. I want this shelf to be finished October 31st. Um, and so I know what stitch count that needs to be and I allowed for like 60 days within the year to not stitch on it. Um, and that's how I determined how much I need to stitch on it per day. So I started out with 600. Now I'm able to be like 570. So every once in a while I like just recalculate to see if, um, like, can I adjust? Can I bring that number down, basically? Or am I on track? I just want to... I just like to know that. So, I don't normally go live every day. I just am right now. <laughs> For, like, emotional support. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, girly. You feel like you have to. Uh oh. Yeah, I, I get it. I get that, girly. Like, there's um, a lot of factors in how we can feel about being out and around other people and anything. Good morning, busy hands. And good morning, Sean. I hope everyone's getting some good crafting in today. Or whatever it is. I have been taken to Walmart and the gas station, daycare, <laughs> um, probably more than, more places than I know. <laughs> so, I've been, like, people have painted their kitchen with me, cooked dinner. <laughs> Cleaned house, folded laundry, put babies to sleep, all kinds of things. Um, hi, Dominique. I, I slept, but probably not, like, exceptionally great. But not the worst, either. I just didn't want to, um... I didn't want to go to sleep last night because waking up is emotionally the worst for me. Um, right now. Um, I think waking up is when I am the most vulnerable, which makes a lot of sense because in order to sleep, you have to be able to feel safe enough to be vulnerable when you're asleep. Um, so waking up, you're in, you're in a very vulnerable state. Anyway, so I didn't want to go to sleep last night. So I probably got like five hours or something like that, but It is what it is. <laughs> Good morning, Rachel. How are you? Working on Dance It by Barbara Anna. I've never stitched a Barbara Anna. One thing I love about these is that I hear so much about, like, the stitching of designers I haven't yet stitched. And I get to hear a lot about patterns that I, I've never known about. It's the love of the craft that we share, and I love it. Five is better than none, absolutely. 
Oh, thank you for the hugs, too. They, they really, they really do help. Like, when I'm overwhelmed, like, for whatever reason, like, maybe overstimulated, maybe just emotionally too much, whatever the case is, like, physical pressure always feels really, really good to me. It's very, like, calming and soothing. I have Cheerios here, so that's what I'm snacking on. It doesn't leave anything on my fingers <laughs> to, to have a problem with my stitching, <laughs> thankfully. And it wasn't available. Like, I could keep this in my room. Um, like, I have, I have meal shakes, and I was able to drink one yesterday. It took me hours to drink it, but that's okay. But they're in the fridge. Like, I can't access the fridge. The fridge makes me gag. I can't get in there, so... Um, Cheerios it is. <laughs> uh, I will probably be on when you're done with the gym, Rachel. I'm only at 61 stitches, and I'm going to 570, so... If I'm not talking, I and there's no confetti, I can do that in two hours. But... It's probably going to be like three. <laughs> That's just what it is. Hello, Alara. Hugs all around. Hugs. Oh. And then I just kind of have to wait and see when Kaylin wakes up. I'll probably stitch again in the afternoon. Maybe. Probably. Oh, she, she has a video call in the afternoon. So, and since I'm, like, not doing any other school with her right now while I am in this state, she needs to get on that call. She does like, um, it's with a group of, I guess it's kind of like a co-op, but online. It's four different families. They, we all live in different states, three different time zones. <laughs> and, um, they meet twice a month on Zoom. And like every month has a different topic and it's chosen by the kids. Um, the point of it is for them to learn how to engage in discussion with other people, how to present, um, like summarize, like ask and discuss questions, um, and how to stay on topic. <laughs> So it's, it's a group, I think the youngest might be 10, and the oldest is 15. Most of them are about 12 or 13. Um, and so the, anyway, each month they have a topic, and this month 
it's art themed so they're the first meeting they presented an artwork or an artist um, that they like I don't know did some research about or, or knew or loved or whatever um, and then today their call is presenting an artwork of their own so I don't even know what Kaylin's going to present I I don't think I, I, I never really know what she's going to present um, because this is a good opportunity for her to kind of own an aspect of her education. Um, and so I just make sure she's aware of what it is that she needs to be doing for this and she'll do something. <laughs> I just don't know what it is. When she picked her monthly topic a couple months ago, it was on food. So they read a book that had like food descriptions in it. And it could be anything. Like it could be like a, a book that had a lot of food in it, like The Christmas Carol or Red Wall or something like that. Um, or it could be like a cookbook. <laughs> and then the second call of that month, I think it was like the history on a specific kind of food, or maybe it was the other way around, it doesn't really matter. But the, the those were the two topics, was like the history of a food, um, like how did it come to be? I think that they, uh, somebody presented like about crepes or something and sometimes somebody picks a topic like a historical period like world war ii or um medieval times or something like that so it gives them a variety of of topics based on somebody in the group's interest so the, the adults are are not like super involved in dictating how it happens. <laughs> Busy hands. There is some danger in in that. Like you don't have to wake up so early and you can get done sooner, but sometimes sometimes you can do it too much <laughs> like if I let Kaylin just wake up whenever she wanted to it would not work out between my energies and her energies because I'm better in the morning and she's better in the afternoon we've kind of figured out how to split the difference except this week it's like out the window nothing is nothing is right I forgot to plug, plug my computer in here do I use a particular curriculum? Okay, there are a lot of options and I am really happy to sp speak on any benefits or any questions that you have on this, but um, I, hold on, I'm sorry. I wiggle the camera, oh, see, there it goes. Let's see if it'll come back. I had to plug my computer in and <laughs> and it, it meant this here it goes there we go um, there are a lot of options which can feel really overwhelming if you're not used to homeschooling um, at all but it also means that you have so much flexibility to find what works for you and your child or children um, so I don't use a particular curriculum, but I do loosely follow um, Well-Educated Heart. Um, you can look them up online. It is a very lovely philosophy, and the, I don't know what she calls herself, but the, the person behind it, she um, has created kind of like this monthly rotation 
for you to kind of follow and it's it's very heavy on feeding the heart um, because there's a lot of resources for like the more scholarly and mind aspects but the heart often is left alone um, lots of story based you can access her materials online for free you don't have to pay for anything um, so I mostly do that like it's not what I do is probably not what most people think of when they think of homeschooling so I find it hard to explain to people who are like outside homeschooling circles because I don't really know how I don't have a succinct way <laughs> of saying anything it's probably not helpful we read a lot I will say that our our main curriculum is books and this is why my home library is is fairly robust is because we read a lot and I don't force discussion about it, but we often have discussions about it. Or I see how something that we have read works inside and comes out even if you don't realize it. And we read fiction and nonfiction both. And that's not the only thing we do. Like, you know, we have math and stuff. I, I believe in learning through life um, and so if m my main goal is that there's a curiosity and a desire and if I do something that is killing those then I know I'm not on the right track and I can adjust. Sometimes you, following a curriculum is really good for people who are just getting started, but it, it also can feel really, really rigid um, and not necessarily well suited for one child because one child could be needing something like more advanced in math, but not as advanced in um, reading, or they have their own interest in a science topic right now and don't want to be don't want that dictated to them you know I also find that their learning like goes in cycles like um, like our interests do like sometimes we want to do this and sometimes we don't want to do that and so we we do it or we don't right and and kids learning is like that like they don't want to engage in math every single day they don't want to engage in chemistry forever and ever um, but when they're ready to engage they take like these huge leaps and bounds and then it lets it sit for a while while their body prepares for the next time they're ready to take these huge leaps and bounds. Sat outside the shop, someone fell asleep in the car. Oh, sounds like someone's tired. She's saving up her energy for bedtime, Bex. That's what's going on.
today feels like I'm like, I can either talk without stitching or stitching without talking. I think it's just because like I've got this like knot sitting right here like in my heart that is just there. <laughs> it's 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 there and it's I don't know, kind of distracting, but because of its ever presence. <sighs> Hi, Holly. You wish you could homeschool your kids when they grow up. That is not allowed. Homeschooling's not allowed in Norway? I'm not sure I knew that. Traveling time is one and a half hours to school every day. That, that's a long way to travel north, girly. She was at playgroup, running around, putting faces. She probably is. <laughs> Constant moving. Now's her break, and then she'll be ready for a uh, not sleeping at bedtime. <laughs> I know here in the states, some some states, it's easier to homeschool in, and other states, it's harder to. And sometimes there's a lot of like hoops to jump through. Where I live, it's not, it's not too bad. It's not the easiest state, it's not the worst state. We were, um, you are not allowed at the time of the kids at school, maybe the book said no. From first to seventh grade when they asked how I was not allowed back there. Interesting. I don't know much about it in other countries, to be honest. Since I've never lived in another country. <laughs> It's not something that I know very much of, so. Alright. Back up to the top. We, um, we play games too. I know a family who is very, like, they consider themselves game schoolers, is what they're called. Um, they own hundreds, I don't know how many games, over a hundred, maybe over 200. I don't know. They own a lot of games. And, and that's, that's, that's their curriculum. If, 
so to speak, is, is games. I think they, they do other things too, like they read and stuff too, but, um, but they play games. Like the skills that you have to utilize to, to play all the many different types of games is like very integrated to what you would need in life. And then once a, once a child has a, an interest in something that maybe needs more academics, then you just go in that direction. She also has like five kids, so playing games is easier. I have one kid, and so playing um, like board games and stuff like that aren't very easy to do with just like me and her and maybe her dad but like last night we started playing well in the afternoon and then again at night um instead of sleeping we played a game we were playing on the switch though and it's this game called moon hunters that we just discovered yesterday and it's an interesting kind of storyline like you you can have up to four people play and you kind it, it's like you're this um like the stories are fragmented and you have to like live out the stories in order to find more of the fragments so maybe we come to the truth something like that um, so you kind of have like these different games within the whole game where the world changes and it's like only five days long and I don't know it's kind of hard to explain but but it's fun because you get to change like how your character, who your character is, and like what kind of a, what skills they are. So like our first playthrough, um, and it, it's interesting to say playthrough because like each playthrough builds upon each other. And so it's not really like starting over. It, it's all connected. Um, but like the first time I was like this magic person and she was like a staff person and we had to figure out like how we can both use the skills of that character to work together to do the fighting. Um, there's also like you talk to people and you make these choices and depending on what choice you make depends on like you know like what reputation you get like are you considered patience or vengeful um, are like they have consequences but you don't get to know your consequence you just get to know like are you going to like apologize or are you going to pay them back like that's the kind of choice you make and then once you make the choice they're like well here's your consequence whether like positive or negative and so we we found that we were having a lot of discussion about like why we wanted to pick something versus another. Um, like there were some, there was one time when we found ourselves in the temple of your characters are like from the moon, but we found ourselves in the temple that belonged to the sun cult or whatever. And you find this, um coffin i guess and your options were like to pray or to open it and kaylin was like well i feel like opening it would be really really rude like this was somebody's burial place this is this is somebody's like honored 
I don't, I don't know. You, do you know what I mean? Like, it was something special, but she was like, I feel like I can't open it, even though it was like the sun cults, not the moons. And, and so she was like, I guess we're going to pray. <laughs> and so we prayed and, and we might have gotten better results like the consequence might have been better had we chosen to open it um like for our character but like as people we felt better so it's been fun like because it's fun but you just have those kind of conversations while you're at it this thread right there my guess is that we're gonna go play that game again today sometime before her dance classes which are late this evening so We will have time in between her video call or before her video call. I don't know. We'll see when she wakes up and go from there, right? Because <laughs> I literally have no idea when she's going to wake up. Games are fun. I don't I don't like being competitive though. So this game really is collaborative and I really, really like that. I'm not a competitive person. I know we've talked about like board games on here before s several times and I have a, a list still from that conversation. Um, we didn't, we didn't talk video games at the time, though, but. I feel like often it's easier to have the cooperative games on a device, like on a console, rather than as a board game because it can create like, you know, your companions, <laughs> that kind of a thing. It seems more easily to do in that medium. Not impossible to do in a board game, but just easier to do as a video game. Fifteen thirty-five and starting to get dark outside. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry that it's like that. My son doesn't sit until like five something, which is seventeen hours, seventeen hundredths. Um, my kids love board games. We buy one new every Christmas to be all together playing. I try to buy a game every Christmas. Um. But like I said, it's hard because there's so few of us that it's hard, it's hard to find games that are fun for so few people.
Do you have a favorite game, girly? Or like you and your kids? It was pretty funny though yesterday because I Kaylin was the one looking through like the online store for switch and she saw that I owned just dance 2023 and she was like you got just dance I was like yes and she was all like offended <laughs> I was like why are you offended didn't I tell you she's like no like, oh well she hasn't really been into just dance for a while and so I guess I didn't think that she'd be really interested although I did think I told her I guess she's interested enough that she is upset I didn't tell her <laughs> that she didn't know. You have to search for games you all can play at the same time with five kids. It's much like quiz related trivia pursuits, something like that. Yeah, the skill levels um, like having a game that can span so many ages I can see that being just as difficult as finding a game that is fun for two people. <laughs> this is not game related. But my mind rabbit trailed to here. I'm proud, happy, I'm happy to, to say that because of all the Lord of the Rings talk a couple days ago, somebody started watching the Lord of the Rings movies, having never watched them before, and is really liking it enough to go look at Lord of the Rings cross-stitch patterns. So, that's kind of one of those, like, got him moments I was very happy to hear it Did you see all the Lord of the Rings, the Hobbit movies, and Harry Potter several times a year? 
they are good ones, so. I don't watch things that frequently, but I would say there are very good things to watch it <laughs> several times a year like that. I'm trying to remember now. With Kaylin, we started reading Harry Potter aloud when she was, I think, eight-ish. But it was just one of several series that we read aloud, so it kind of, it became one that we cycled through. Um, like, I think we were reading Narnia, Little House um, on the Prairie books, um, Harry Potter, and probably like two other series that we were cycling through. <laughs> like we didn't just finish a series, we would like read one and then read the next. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then after we read the books for Harry Potter, we watched the movie so she's now 13 she still hasn't been through all the harry potter books and hasn't seen all the movies what i'm trying to remember is if we watched the fourth movie after having read the book because i i'm i don't think that we did I will have to ask her that because, yeah. She'll know if she watched it or not. reading the fifth Harry Potter book aloud now so that's the one that she <laughs> and it's funny because I'm like this one's my least favorite Harry Potter book <laughs> and she's she's 13 Harry's 15 and like the reason I'm like it's my least favorite I don't know like she did such a good job at writing Harry to be, like, that annoying hormonal 15-year-old boy, and it was so annoying. <laughs> and, yeah. But, like, Kaylin, we're reading this, and Kaylin is like, but, like, I understand this, like, I relate. <laughs> I'm like, well, I read it when I was like 14 or 15 and I, I basically aged up with Harry um, like as the books came out I was his age um, and I was like I was like that I read I read it at that time and I still thought he was annoying <laughs> the name of the Lord of the Rings pattern I'm starting in February is called Home in the Mountains I do you not have it right next to me? It's by Golden Kite. And this one. That's the one that I'm going to start in February.
Um, on Golden Kite, it will have a lot of different options, ways that you can buy it. Um, it's also not cheap, but there are ways that you can get it cheaper. But this is what it is. So if you have any questions about what I got, what I'm planning to stitch it on, how to get it cheaper, or anything like that, feel free to ask. <laughs> I know it looks beautiful. I can't I can't wait to get it started. In 38 days, my birthday is in 38 days. So that's that's when we will start it. I, I use the we to mean like whoever is starting it with me because there are dozens and dozens of you it feels like oh I know what I'm supposed to do today I should film a floss tube video even though basically everything that I've stitched is now on live streaming. Today is floss tube filming day. Well, we'll see if that happens though. You said you were gonna stitch while I was live. Now you're tired of cleaning and laying in bed watching YouTube. <laughs> oh well, I'll try to like make sure that I'm I'm stitching more. You think the first book was the slowest? You put it down halfway through. Yeah. I. I mean when I was reading, I've always read it all the way through, it's just definitely my least favorite of them all. I'm not sure I have a favorite, so don't ask me if I have a favorite. I don't. But the fifth one's my least favorite. Do I use two cameras or phones to stream, or do I use a laptop? I use two webcams and a laptop. My laptop doesn't have a webcam built in. 
Um, but my laptop, the webcams I ho are hooked into the laptop, and then I have a software to give me, like, little picture and big picture going on. Your birthday's the day before mine, Shauna. Mine's the 24th of February. So I'm starting mine on my birthday. Make it birthday start. Do it. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this um, color before I get sidetracked into Aunt telling you how to get all the pattern and stuff. Um, yes, girly and Shauna, I will, I will say the same one. You want to get back to Twitch gaming, but never able to figure out the two cameras thing. Yeah. Um, I can, um, this is not the right place for that stitch. I don't like using my phone for streaming simply because I like to have my phone available for, I don't know, communication purposes or something. Um, or like if I need to look something up. So I have, that's, that's the setup I have is, is two separate cameras, two webcams. Um, and and a software going going on so that's what i've got i do want this would be different from gaming i i think for gaming you don't need a second i mean if you're talking about video gaming I don't think you need a second camera, you just need one camera, um, but if you have the software, you'd be able to like show your screen and or your game and have your face there. I just need two cameras because of, you know, stitching versus whatever. Okay, I'm trying, I really am trying, I'm trying to finish this so I can talk about the golden kite. I just know that talking about the golden kite will make me stop stitching, and then I will forget where I was stitching. And I literally just narrated all of that to you for, I don't know, I just did. It's just what I do. I probably did it for myself so that I remembered what I was doing. <laughs> it's to keep me focused, guys. It's for it's for my processing. That's what that is. But my string is almost finished. I literally could mark on Pattern Keeper, like, parked thread, but that just occurred to me right now. And now I feel like I'm almost done the thread. I should just finish the thread. If you've ever wondered what's gone on in somebody's head, <laughs> here's a live stream. <laughs> Oh gosh. Good morning, Inherited Stitches. You wish you had the internet to be able to do lives. Yeah, that can be a big part of it. Come visit me! You can share my internet! Okay. Hey look, that was 222 stitches. Cool. Okay. So golden kite, this right here. 
First of all, they don't always have the pattern up on their site. If you do not see the pattern on their site, you can email them and they can help you out. It has worked for other people. It will work for you. Um, second is that they have a lot of options and each of those options have mock-ups. I highly recommend that you look at each mock-up to decide what level of detail it is that you want in the piece. Um, yes, Alara, live with Suki and Alara. I approve of this message. Um, hi, my name is Suki and I approve of this message. Okay. Um, yes, so look at the mock-ups. And the thing is, is that this piece has, for me, one of the very cool things about this piece is that the fellowship are in here. They're right here on this bridge. Um, but if you go with a small unblended um, like solid color chances are you're not gonna see that okay if you don't care as much about seeing the fellowship you might not that, that you'll be fine with that so you are literally gonna have to look up all the mock-ups and decide what level of detail and headache do I want to deal with so I went with um, the standard size, which is the largest size, the standard size blended colors because I do big things and like all the detail, right? Um, so obviously I'm not afraid I have this super size max color that I work on, no big deal. Um, and that's what I got. Blended threads can be tricky. Some people hate working with blended threads. So they got the standard size, but solid color. Um, you keep slapping your hands every time you think of starting new cross-stitch patterns. I message Alara and say, Alara, tell me no. Um, or I say something to Kaylin and Kaylin says, absolutely no way. So... <laughs> <laughs> um, you'd rather you have a rather horrific number of lips yourself. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Anyway, so they do have all the mock-ups. You can like look at that and just decide what level of detail you are interested in. I will tell you that for the standard size, the stitch count is. 246,500 stitches. Did I say 200? It says at 346,500 stitches. Um, and I think there's about 70 blends. I'm not positive with that, about that, but it has a lot of blends. So. <laughs> I, I really like those emojis right there. Um, if we were on Twitch, those would be bouncing across my screen right now and I'd be cracking up. Um, like, it makes me laugh just to think about how those would be bouncing across my screen. Anyway. So once you've decided which version you want to get, you can buy it outright, and that's going to be the most expensive way, obviously. You can keep an eye on their sale, like they, their weekly sale, those change out every week, and you can find this one on there sometimes. That gives you, I think, like a 20% discount. You can also buy three patterns and get, oh, it's a discount, 10% off? I can't remember now, 30% off? What's the discount here? Golden Kite Patterns. Good morning, Angie. How are you? Okay. Buy three or more patterns and get 30% discount, okay? Um, 
the weekly sales are up to 50%. So it could be anywhere in that spectrum up to 50%. Um, and those two sales will combine. So if you see it on a weekly sale and then you buy three patterns, you'll get the deepest discount that you possibly can. Um, and what I did was I bought this pattern and then like the cheapest two patterns I could find, which was like $1.99, okay? Um, and it was cheaper, like getting that 30% discount was still cheaper than if I had bought it on its own. So I hope that helps anybody currently considering getting this chart or any other Golden Kite charts. Um, they are expensive. There are ways to get them cheaper. You just have to pay attention. Um, or just go for the 30% discount and there's that. So I hope I answered everyone's questions about that. Oh, I am stitching, I'm going to be stitching it on 28 count fabric because I'm doing blends. I you can't, I can't do one strand, I have to use two strands. Um, and I like 28 count tent stitch with two strands. So that's my plan in 38 days. You, Shauna approves of Suki and Alara live. <laughs> Angie, I'm sorry sick kiddo and you're not feeling well yourself we are here in order to survive Angie that is literally why I'm here so please let us help you survive <laughs> you're welcome girly I can't even tell you what other patterns I bought with it. I feel like it was like a cat and like a fall scene. I don't know because I only got them for the discount. <laughs> How am I doing? Better is so relative and I don't know how to answer better if I'm better or not. Um, in some ways, yes. I will say mentally, yes. Emotionally, I will not be better for a very, very long time. Um, and physically, it's getting better. So I think, yes, I can say I'm doing better, just not emotionally. And emotionally, I won't be for a very long time. I'm sleeping better than I did the first night. <laughs> I've, I've discovered that I don't want to go to sleep at night because mornings are the hardest emotionally, like waking up is the hardest. And, um, and so like, I kind of dread going to sleep because I know on the other side of sleeping is waking up. So, but at least I am sleeping it may not be great sleep but I'm used to not great sleep so that's okay um I am eating Cheerios yesterday I managed 500 calories ish maybe a little bit more how much does like how many calories does a cafe latte have I did have coffee because I can keep coffee down um, and I hadn't gone to the store yet. And I had a meal replacement shake and like a few bites of ramen. So I think I managed to get a little more than 500. 
calories yesterday. It, this is progress. I can't get in my fridge yet, though. Like, I opened my fridge, and, like, it's like an immediate gagging reflex happening. I can only walk in my kitchen right now because Kaylin spent time cleaning it up yesterday. It's not all the way there, but, um, like, it's, it's a lot better for me to be able to get into the kitchen. But interacting with, like, a lot of things is not good still. You've had that, but different reasons. I'm probably different reasons, yeah. The same dread of waking up, yeah. <sighs> And right now, I feel a lot of anxiety. But like, that feels easier to handle than like the deep hurt and pain. Oh man, I'm going to start crying now. <laughs> You have PTSD nightmares, so getting up in the morning is an extreme relief at times. Um, that's me normally. Like, let me just get up and, and get going. And right now, it's just like this hardest grieving period for me that... And, and I, I am because I'm not eating, like I don't really have the energy to just, just like get up and get going. N normally I don't dread waking up. That's the thing. That's the thing. Normally I don't dread waking up. Like I, I, mm, I kind of do like, because if I wake up too early, I can't go back to sleep, but like right now is not normal, right? Um, and I hate having dreams because they're always super intense and leave me a mess. But, um, yeah. Thank you, Angie. It's hard. It's hard, but mentally, at least, I'm, I, I feel pretty solid mentally. I wasn't the first night. Um, that night that I posted onto Facebook, not Facebook, Instagram, Facebook knows nothing. Um, well, Facebook knows whatever. Anyway, um, when I posted to Instagram that, that one night, I was not mentally well. So I'm happy to be better than that. And it's been so good to like have this and I don't have this without you guys and that's kind of everything to me right now
I feel like that emoji all the time right now, Angie. <laughs> like, I can't... Like, if I made a list of how many people through this community, and I'll be completely honest, this community is pretty much the only place I've shared. I mean, it, it is the only place I've shared, so <laughs> other people don't know. But if I had a list of how many people, like, that would feel so overwhelming because, because it's just been incredible. Well, thank you, Angie. I am really loving how ethereal her dress is. Like, this is dress and this is book. <laughs> like, it just transitions weirdly enough <laughs> it's it really is amazing to see it come come together <sighs> you take a med specifically to help with cpt ptsd nightmares it really helps <sighs> that's something like I've really been wanting to try everything outside of medication for like a long-term solution. Um, I've taken some short-term medication before, like it was meant to be short-term, but There may be comes a point where I just need to say, like, there comes a point where I, I maybe need to say, like, I need to go with something. Like, I need to search until I find something pharmaceutical-based. feel like there needs to be like an acceptance within me and I haven't I haven't reached that yet I've been so hesitant kind of the same reason why I don't go see a therapist is um bad experiences with them make it hard <laughs> to want to go um even if it would be good for me Angie, people have no idea how their comments and conversations have taken me out of dark days. I cannot tell you how many times I have heard that over the last few days from people. Um, like, like how many times people have said to me that that's been my videos for them. Um, whether like my regular videos or like when I live stream, like, And you really don't have any idea. Like, it is mind-blowing to me that I have that kind of inner, like, influence, I guess, on somebody's day. It's not something I'm used to. <laughs> you think you have CPTSD, but not officially diagnosed. I have no official mm, diagnosis either. Um, aside from extreme emotional stress, <laughs> and I'm okay not having any official diagnosis in a way. I'm okay with this. 
One more question about the Golden Kite. You never got a full cover. I don't know. I, I don't think Golden Kite does a full kit. I think they just do patterns. I could be wrong on that. But I just bought the pattern. And then I will use my own floss. I already have fabric. I've got like, it's down here. I've got like a big thing of fabric that I will cut. So, I, but I don't, I could be wrong, but I don't think Golden Kite does kits. Gotta, this mostly just makes the nightmares bearable. Trauma is extremely complex. I'm like, you can't really do much about it. Like, it's going to do what it does. You had a horrible experience with the council as a teenager. See, like, you think that they're going to be safe places, and then when they're not, like, you don't want to go back. I think getting started, Inherited Stitches, I think getting started is probably the hardest part. Absolutely. I've not seen the, the, the crappy childhood fairy. <laughs> no, I have not seen them. The full kit is like 480. That seems ridiculous. Honestly, 480 from Golden Kite, that seems too high. I would kit it up myself. However, you are in Norway, so that might have an effect. Like, I have a full set of DMC, so I'm going to be using that. Your fear is encountering another bad therapist. You've got no contact with your ex-parents. I kind of love that you say ex-parents. Absolutely no judgment and criticism here, girl. None. Patrick. Oh, I think I know who you're talking about. T. Han. I think that's what it is. Um, I've seen him. Angie, it could be the price of a Gekka Rouge kit, but I've never looked, so I don't know. <laughs> I just know what it is to, like, kit one up myself, and I feel like that would be really high, but I have no idea. I'm kind of out of touch with what kids cost, maybe. Alara says Gecko Rouge kits average about $100. Then again, like I said, Girly is in Norway. Like, her prices could definitely be different because of that. I don't know. I was blessed in that I found a wonderful therapist after three mediocre ones. I've been with her on and off. Oh, that's wonderful, Donna. If I persisted, I'm sure I would find one too, but it's hard. It's hard to do one more thing on top of all the other things that I'm trying to do and not doing right now. You're restraining yourself from using the vocabulary I usually do in reference to that. Okay, Inherited Stitches, we have like, um, we've had therapy sessions on here before about mothers <laughs> so <laughs> i understand <laughs> interestingly just last night i was talking with kaylin about something and i told her about this experience i was like pretty certain that she had heard it before but she's had only heard part of it and so i i told her like the full thing and she was like i would have punched her <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this now. 
Oh man. So I I get it here and yes. Okay, double that if overseas. Yes, and the cost, of course, Pauline, of going going overseas. Your intent here is not for sympathy or something, just being honest. Yeah, no, I I totally get it, but I think that's that's me too. Like I'm not I'm not really trying like I am trying I'm just moving forward. I'm trying to be the best person that I can be and like deal with what is in my control to deal with. Five hundred dollars in Canadian without weird plastic money. <laughs> That's funny. Oh gosh. When you're going through hell, keep going. That's me right now. <laughs> Satan's assistant. Ooh. Ouch. But yes. I wonder what it says for me on that. Oh, gosh. That's so much. Okay, let me see. Yep, that is absolutely the, the price that it says on here. It says $479.99. That sounds like so much, though. It has... My guess, though, is that um, a kit with blended colors, there's probably a lot of what they're probably doing is combining like your your blended together in some way i don't really know how they would do it um but my guess is is it has to do with the blended colors nope that would be wrong because if you got the solid colors it's still the same price like that is a ridiculous amount for a kit the difference between the standard and the medium is hilarious. The standard is 479 and the medium is 169 That's funny. Donna, yes, it's so hard when you're already exhausted. Like, when you feel like you're just surviving constantly, like, that's what the last, like, three or four years have been is is trying to get out of feeling like I'm just surviving. And I kind of feel, I finally feel like I'm like that. Shadow lane kits, stretching. Shadow lanes are expensive, but so pretty. I love my shadow lane. Can't wait to do more. I can't wait to finish, do anything with that, but yeah. Okay. Um, good morning, Michelle. Richter, it, right, I think it's Richter, Richter, I don't know how to say that. Golden Kite. Because we're talking about this pattern. Michelle, we were talking about the kit for this. Girlie was asking um, about the kit, but that sounds way too expensive for a kit, and I wouldn't get it. The chart is, it is quite expensive. It's like 40, 30 something dollars. I mean, you can get it cheaper, um, which I've detailed out and I will detail out again should somebody need me to again. But um, you can get it cheaper. 
But, like, that's a lot for a kit. It sounds like they really don't want to kit stuff up, but they'll begrudgingly do it for money. <laughs> uh, yeah. Richter. Okay. I would totally kit it myself cheaper. I just know that Gurley, who is looking at the kit, she's in Norway, and DMC for her is very expensive. So, I don't know how that would work for her. Like, what would be the best option? You guys suck it for full coverage twice, but do you really do one? No. <laughs> is it Deer Creek? I know a lot of people do the that one and the mini size of mini Deer Creek. I just, anyway. The Golden Kite works in Pattern Keeper, I will say that. So if you have Pattern Keeper, get the PDF, put it in that sucker. Barina, exactly. Like I feel like I feel like doing my super size max color was less than that. I mean, technically I bought fabric twice, so maybe not, but and you thought charting creation charts were pricey. Yeah, their golden kites are very expensive, which is why which is why I'm I like to tell people how they can get the charts for cheaper. There might be another brand. I don't know. Girly, you'd have to, you would know this. Like, can you get any other brand of floss cheaper than DMC? Like, Anchor or CXC? Because maybe one of those options would be better than DMC in general. You might be willing to pay for one of those full coverage ones if the thread is intelligently organized. The only kit I've ever really gotten was my Super Size Max color, but then I ended up ditching that at some point. Like, I still have all the threads, but I um, moved it to something else. It didn't work for me because there's like 239 colors. You're over. You just have a preference, Richter. Like, that is all. I love Pattern Keeper for the patterns I have in Pattern Keeper, but I really like having print patterns too. Hello! Come say hi to everyone. I didn't know when you would be awake because we went to sleep so late. Come sit with me. I'm so excited for you to be here. Hey. This is Kaylin, everyone. She's amazing. She cleaned the kitchen, did the dishes, she's fed the pups. She's giving a disclaimer that she hasn't finished, but like I can walk in the kitchen, so that's amazing. She like gets in the refrigerator and gets things for me and puts things away for me. She says lots of very smart things. <laughs> Her <laughs> reputation has grown. <laughs> um, golden kite charts are like for the elite. And you're down here in middle class with a 50% hate sales. <laughs> oh gosh. DMC anchor silky or silk. Just started your first fancy lady. Beads will be your first. Ooh, Richter. Which one? I want to know. Hey, look. Alara says good morning. And Michelle says that you're amazing. Yeah. Richter loves helpers like you. Yeah, Busy Hand says you're so cute. 
Look, Michelle says you're so, she's impressed you did the dishes. I am too, because she don't like doing the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> She'll unload the dishwasher, but I always wash the dishes. <laughs> I've never tried Sullivan's thread. So, maybe Anchor, but DMC is the cheapest in Norway still. I know uh, Megan from Stitching Moon talks a lot about, about how the difficulty of getting stitching things while in Norway. So, Kaylin Alara says, okay, Kaylin, but we got to compromise on your mom starting things. <laughs> Did you hear that? She gets to start like one thing. One. See, this is what I get to deal with. <laughs> she told me I get to start like one thing. Did you know that I have like three starts saved up? I could start three things and still be within my realm of like finish two things, start one thing. She's giving me eye rolls here. Can you see this? Angie says you're good to me. Ooh, portrait of Veronica. What did you say? Well, hide your things if you get some stuff all at once. You're going to hide my things? Yeah. She says she's going to hide my things if I start more than one. <laughs> Me darling. Inherited Stitches says good morning. And Brina says good morning from Washington. She's waking. <laughs> she Yes, but you're three hours behind, so it's so acceptable for you to just be waking up. We were up very late last night, so there's that. I don't want to just be going home. Richter would rather clean than cook, and Inherited Stitches would rather clean a toilet than put a duvet cover on. <laughs> <laughs> You have way more starts than finishes. <laughs> she, oh, hi, honey bunny stitchery. Oh, your stitching is so clean. That one's a beautiful one. Shauna says hi. Um, huh? I'm literally, I, online, but there's like I five know. more people I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of people you don't know when I'm live. I don't know. I don't know the thing. Um, anyway, honey bunny stitchery says that you look like me. It's true, and we get sisters a lot. Like, they will age her up. She's 13, and I'm 35, but they will age her up to, like, 16 and me down to, like, 20 and make us sisters. So, there's that. It's so funny when you said that class, like, in the house, the person on the porch. Who thought you were the owner? No. Did he, he think knew that you he... were the he knew you were the owner, and since he knew that you were the owner, he kept you at a higher age, so he had to age me up. Oh, until yeah. I was like twenty. That's true. <laughs> Thanks. Katie Cat is waving too. Richter, this is Richter's first time with a live. I keep telling her. I keep using names from from lives and she's like I don't know these names because she knows the names from what I end up mentioning in my floss tube she you do know some others but not very like not all of these exactly. you don't know all my people <laughs> I don't have I have a lot of people <laughs> oh yeah so Alara she does not want me to start anything she says I'm not allowed <laughs> the thumbs up. <laughs> she will she will revolt and start hiding my supplies if I do that. <laughs> I'm getting so much stitching done right now, guys. <laughs> Names are hard. Well, and I think it's just, like, there's a lot, and she's not usually around when I'm live streaming, because usually I only do it on the weekends when she's not here. 
Oh, yeah. I told her about the cruise. I told her we were going to be on a cruise. Oh, no, I didn't tell her that we were, like, all going to go on a cruise together. You didn't? I, well, I did say that I wanted to go on a cruise. And no. Did I tell you that we? I was like, we're all going to go on a cruise together? Yeah, you did. Cool. I did tell her. <laughs> um, you just finished your for Oh, happy Flossiversary. Kaylin has started a cross stitch. Look, y'all, Kaylin can cross stitch. Can you pet the dog so that I can do something else? See? Maybe it's better if I show it down here. This Probably. is Kaylin's project, everybody. I am absolutely pressuring her into working on this. Everybody start pressuring her too. She has not touched this for like 10 months. Show your face, Kaylin. Probably, no, I'm pretty sure it was like March. Yeah, so she has one. It's even a full coverage, like, it's like 4%. Caitlin's like, it is. <laughs> it is. Look, they're all cheering you. Very nice work. Looks awesome. I it's impressive. Read. She can read. Yes, but you know how I narrate, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm just narrating. Mm. Work on it or your mom starts <laughs> something new. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> <laughs> Every month she doesn't work on it. I did get it fixed for her. It is 100% ready to go, Angie. There is nothing to stop her except herself. It is so cute. Oh, I didn't even show you guys the picture. Some of you know what this looks like and some of you don't. This is the chart. Is it is so stinking cute? Look at him holding his nose. <laughs> Look, if I stitch on this for her, does that mean I get to start something new? No, wait, no. no. So if she doesn't work on it and I stitch on it, I can start two new things. Alara says she, she needs to live vicariously through your dragon piece so she doesn't start more. Through somebody else, like your your you enjoy watching them live out that particular experience, so that they don't have to live it themselves. Like they're living it through your actions. No excuses then. <laughs> My 13-year-old sounds like your three-year-old. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> yeah, but then I'll start something new. <laughs> if you go downstairs, um, obviously I've not fed them all, and she's like walked outside and been like, it's wet, ugh. So she's not going very far outside either. I would also keep a uh, a meal shirt. Okay. Bye. Pip, go with Kaylin. You have you do you have a bottle. I do because I didn't drink much of it. Ah. Go with Kaylin. See? She's like just pet me. Can you um Pip. get Pip? I sound like him. That's funny. <laughs> the 35-year-old sounds like the 3-year-old. I get to start one new thing. No, two more things. No, ten more things. <laughs> I really don't, like... She's so strict because, like, I'm kind of strict. <laughs> like, I know that 
I want to see progress on the projects I have. And so she's just trying to keep me, like, in line with that. She really is. <laughs> If I were to say it doesn't stress me out to have a lot of projects, she would totally be like, okay, we're good. I feel like something changed here and now all of a sudden you can like, you can see the second camera up here. Like, how did that happen? I don't know. Um, whatever. <laughs> oh, goodness. She is really great, so. <sighs> so what should we do now? I highly doubt it was. Oh, I think that she did. Hmm. Is there a bit of food? Yeah. I don't know if he did. I don't know. He did not tell me. It's possible that that was food from last night. Well, Hello. but if the okay, if Pip's bowl is on top of her crate, then the dogs have not been fed. Okay. Because I put it up there because she hadn't finished her food for me last night. Mm. Okay. Do I have a video of my setup when I'm filming? Like when I'm live streaming filming or when I'm floss tube filming? I don't have a video of either one, but I'm just wondering which one you're interested in. <laughs> She's asking if I have a video of my setup when I'm filming. Yeah, and I don't think I've ever made a video of my setup. Oh, I guess you made it. Okay. Okay. Either? Okay. Well, they are different. Um, and I don't have a video of either, but I can. Thanks for hanging out, Angie. Hopefully you and Sikado are feeling better relatively soon. Um, I have, hold on, I need something in my stomach. Okay. Um, I've kind of been playing around with my live stream setup, and there is something that I, um, want to get. Okay, it, it's kind of bothering me that you can see that camera so much, but I'm not really sure how it like got into the film that's closer um, um i can i can show sometime it's probably better for me to show than like try to explain what i have i will say that for live streaming i do want a better like arm for the this camera the one that faces my stitching but I haven't gotten one yet. But this works for now. What I have works for now. And I stitch in like two different places. So when I'm live streaming, like it's one thing here, like I'm sitting on the floor, you can probably tell I'm, I'm, I have a floor cushion, I'm sitting on the floor. But then when I'm stitching like anything else, I'm sitting in this chair at my desk. And so like it's a completely different kind of a setup. Like I have to move it. And when I film floss tube, there's this chair over here <laughs> and I have a ring light. So it's, it's all different in a way.
I haven't really done any talked about like how my live stream setup is mostly because like I'm still figuring out the software for it and I don't feel like I present it very well yet so that's one reason why I haven't I haven't done that yet like I just don't have enough experience with the software and like figuring out some of the ins and outs and troubleshooting with it more coffee lives than anything I mean it's harder with the with the double camera and I know some people if you don't have a double camera for a while I just showed my stitching I didn't show my face um, but I really liked the idea of having the two camera thing so what I, what I feel like the two camera thing does is Like, it shows my, um, like, genuine self. Like, you know that I'm invested in you. I, I cannot hide what's happening inside me, right? So, um, like, it, it comes out. <laughs> Like, there's no pretending whatsoever. <laughs> you like seeing how close you can get to your stitches? Yes. I think people like to see that, too, is, is they like to see um, that. And these, though, I'm using webcams and I'm able to, like, zoom in. I could get even closer to my stitches than this. Here, I'll show you. Of course, if I do this, it means figuring out where I was before, and that's okay. So, this might get blurry, okay? But I can get closer. Whoa, that's close. You want to see some big hands? <laughs> and then if I need to, I can adjust the focus. See, like, that made it worse. And that made it worse. So really, that's pretty good. I can get closer. You want to see closer? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh. The transparency I have. Thank you. I'm not interested in not being me. Like, 100% uninterested. I could get even closer to this, but I feel like that would just make my fingers, like, really big. When you have a face cam also, it feels more personal rather than just the stitching. Yeah. I, I, I agree. Um, my, my phone's right here because I like to look things up <laughs> so I don't ever like using my phone. What I am is I have two webcams that are attached to my laptop, which is running a software, technically two different softwares in order to bring you this, but that's okay, you don't. Everyone's setup, it depends on like what equipment you have and what things you decide to go with depends on what you can do, you know? I do know people who go live with their phone, though. Um, it's just not my preference. Because people will mention patterns that I don't know about. <laughs> and I need to go look them up. <laughs> or, like, I'm trying to answer a question, and I'm like, I'm not really sure. Let me look that up.
Good morning, Chrissy. How are you today? I will say, Richter, I film my floss tubes on my phone. That's been the best for me. Um, though I've not actually tried it with the webcam. I wonder if I did it with the webcam, how that would go. I don't know what I do for that works, but I do it differently for live streaming for sure. Also, oh, I would have to go live with your phone and try to run hotspot for your tablet for comments. But then you'd have nothing to stitch from. I don't know how you see comments through your phone. Like, I've never streamed from my phone. I assume you can see comments, but... Like, when I go live through my laptop without all the software, like before I did that, um, like, you know, the YouTube website is built so that you see the comments right there. Um, but I've never done that from my phone, so I'm not even sure how well that would work. I don't know. I can't say I know answers. I just can tell you what I have experienced. in your office and bedroom working and watching <laughs> nice you're welcome I mean like if I if I can help in any way I will do so I think one of the hardest things for um, people who want to start live streaming and their channel is is um, like small, I think you can live stream through the browser before you have a thousand followers. I think you, I think you have to have a thousand in order to have mobile live streaming. I think I never I didn't try live streaming when I was under a thousand so I think oh no I did but I did it from my computer I already knew I was on my computer for that so I never since I've never tried from my phone I literally just gave you a lie yes so yeah if you do it from a computer um, Okay. Um, sorry, a message came in about Kaylin's call later and I needed to read that. So, um, yes, so I did stream before I had a thousand, but I was doing it through a computer, so that point is moot anyway. I will say that it's fun. I understand that not everybody likes, like, wants to be the person, like, on this side of the live stream, but they still really enjoy live streaming. Um.
I honestly feel like your community is like the bomb no matter what, right? It doesn't matter. Like the numbers truly don't matter. There is a person on either, on the other end of that number. Like every, that number signifies a person. And, and so long as that person matters to you and you share that with them, then you're like, that's all you need. Like that's your community and it's amazing. It's like when you, when you really think about the numbers in terms of people, like how many people would you feed at uh, your dinner, like Christmas dinner, you know? Um, how many people would you invite over to a backyard party? And then realize that it comes nowhere close to the number of people that I talk to and love in this way. Like, genuinely love you guys. All day long. Like, let's keep this up. Let's keep, let's go. Let's do it. Whatever it is, let's do it. <laughs> Except apparently all the news starts because Kaylin, you know. Wow, it's 11 o'clock. There's a church nearby that tolls a bell on the hour. And it's going off right now. And I'm like, oh, we're like late morning now. That's what I love. Starts can't be held. <laughs> I'm majorly dipping into your trash reality TV time. <laughs> you like me more than housewives. <laughs> You're going to get behind, Michelle. Come on. I am in the States, Richter. I live in Virginia. Oh, Verena, could you hear the bell? That's funny. It was pretty loud right then. Sometimes I feel like I don't hear it very well. My floss tubes have been inspirational, both your stitching and sharing. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's funny that you guys could hear the bell. Like, it's not even, like, right across the street. Like, it's a bit away, but... Yes, I am in the east. Virginia. Yep. You're looking if you can download them for the airplane. That's a that see, and then you can get all caught up on your five and a hour, five and a half hour flight. Granted, you still have a kid to deal with, but maybe he'll fall asleep. <laughs> I feel like when I started my floss tubes for the first like four months I kept getting asked or I re kept receiving comments like about the amount that I stitched and it was never negative never ever ever negative um just to be clear about that. It, but it was always like, wow, you stitch so much, or how do you have time to stitch? Or um, like, I wish I could stitch as much as you. And I I just kept feeling in my heart, like, like, I wish you could stitch as long as you wanted to, but not for the same reasons that I stitch a lot. <laughs> because, like I stitched because I couldn't do other things. 
I stitched because of burnout. I stitched because of trauma. I stitched because of, of, of certain low executive functioning abilities, right? Like, and so when I, when I did finally like say something on, on a video, like I just was like, I need to, I need to address this because I feel like I'm not, I didn't feel like I was hiding it, but I also didn't feel like I was like quite transparent enough. Like, I, this is why I stitch as much as I do. And, and like, I would love to be able to do other things. Sometimes I'm able to. Um, and I've been like, I've been in a better place. And right now I feel like I'm kind of right back where I was like a year ago, not right back, but like in terms of stitching all the time. And I'm like, why can't we normalize that? Why can't we like validate for that for each other? Um, like, it's okay to stitch a lot, whether for, for whatever the reasons, and it doesn't mean that it's, it's bad or negative. And if you can't stitch because you're able to do other things, like that's not, a bad thing either sometimes for you that's just what it has to look like life is different for everyone life and family always there but so is my stitch and I do it when I can but I always have it there yes like when I'm feeling good and I'm able to do other things like that's great and I do those other things but when it's not great and I stitch more than normal that's okay too because that's what is needed there and it's always been there for me so long as i engage in it your therapist said how do we stitch less so you can do more so you got rid of her amen rude that's not her choice that's the thing <laughs> it's not her place to tell you that you need to stitch less like, that's not how it works. <laughs> no. Ugh. The only person who can say whether it's too much is yourself. The end. Like maybe some days I stitch too much because I know that I had the ability to do something else and I wanted to do something else and I just didn't. That's different from not having the ability to do something else. 100%, at least you are working your brain. You can always be laying in bed wallowing. Yes. I love using my brain in this way. <laughs> I am absolutely my own therapist. Like, that's another thing. I'm like, it's not that I don't think getting to going to see a therapist would be a good thing, but in the absence of that, I have made so much progress on my own. I, I say on my own, I have had people um, to help me along in that path, but like I've done a lot of work on my own. You searched Virginia so you could put me on the map. I live real, like, right next to the Capitol. So if you want a more specific place, I'm, like, in the middle. <laughs> I'm near Richmond.
Now that we've been here for like two and a half hours and I'm at 300 stitches, time to stitch again. <sighs> Dallas Fort Worth area. It's gonna be in the 70s. I wanna come. I just stitched all of that and my end came out. I say all of that, it wasn't that much. It has been in the 50s here lately. I will, it's been in the 50s. But like my body's still desperately trying to stay warm because I'm not eating very much. Kentucky's not too far from me. Wisconsin, Minnesota, one in Texas, yeah. I know, and Rachel, North Carolina is so daggone close to me. Uh, 60s is an improvement, but like maybe not like early morning or something like that. You're fine. Inherited stitches, like it is totally fine. I always feel like this space is just like whatever it needs to be for people. So like if people are chatty, then perfect if they're not then perfect like you're still getting what you need otherwise you wouldn't be here you're trying to put on your face <laughs> oh, you should have a pin in, a pin map for where people are at i love it we're about three and a half or four hours away from each other see that's close it's closer than alara because apparently I just, everybody's in terms of how close Alara is, I don't know. <laughs> I think because I've met Alara, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> like Alara and Shauna and lots of Debras. I know, it, well, and between Virginia and Maryland is, like, all the traffic, so. <laughs> it still would have taken, like, five hours to get to you because of that. I don't know, Alara. I don't know why my mind went there. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you're further away than Alara. Oh, you're closer than Alara. I don't know. <sighs> Come on, coffee, you had one job. Coffee's a new thing for me. Um, I'm not sure that it affects me in awakeness it probably does but like right now it's de it's something that i've learned can like set it settles in my stomach nicely now you're 10 hours away 10 hours away is further but it's not the worst alara's like eight hours
In June, you're going to be moving to Georgia, so we'll be further then. It's true. That is further. And, like, hotter. And more humid. And... So there's that. If I drive how long of a time to... To Washington? To Washington, D.C., girly? Like, from where I live to Washington, D.C.? Grocery shopping! Alright, Richter. Yay. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you too. <laughs> Have a good day. You can't understand the not drinking coffee all your life. Um, I was raised to not drink coffee. Second kid started coffee, third kid coffee IV. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I never had a second kid, so maybe there's that. Um, I was raised to not drink coffee. So. Okay, so girly, I live in near Richmond, Virginia. Washington, D.C. is the United States capital. That's a little bit north of me. In traffic, which is always, it takes about three hours for me to get up there. We don't, America doesn't have very good public transit, so anything else would be slower. You tried coffee when you were a kid and hated it. Some friend of me when I was a teen introduced me to you. I, um... I need that package that's getting delivered. It's got some like homeopathic anxiety calming down remedy thing in it. Like, yes, please, right now. Um, so, yeah, I was raised to not drink coffee. Um, Really, it was like herbal tea and hot chocolate was what what I drank pretty much exclusively. Not exclusively. I'm like, I drank water and juice and stuff like that. But I know. I'm like, Kaylin, bring it up to me, please. Um... Cause I don't actually want to go get it, but I want the package. Yay. Okay. Um, you were asked if you were someone's mom when you were in middle school? That's a little extreme. Your dad drank like 30 cups a day and your mom wouldn't touch it, but as soon as you hit college, he gave, gave me all the coffee. <laughs> in their defense, it was a kindergartner. <laughs> okay, well, at least it wasn't like another adult or something that was like asking that. Hi, Pip. You came back. Does she really, should she really be in here? I'm just wondering how she goes to the bathroom. No, she's I think it's, what is this one? You know when you get packages and you're not really sure what you ordered? And from Amazon, that means you forgot in the last, like, one or two days? Oh, 
porch pirates. Packages are really safe in my neighborhood. Like, my neighborhood really doesn't have any trouble. But, like, the front door is, like, right outside my bedroom window. So, like, I could see them. I could see them. Do I have... I know, I don't really want to use my crafting scissors. Oh, they're on the... Oh, no. Yes. That thing. I know, that's been a lot to me. She needs a walk, honestly. I, I'm pretty certain that's what it is. She's bored. You got a package from 123Stitch today? This is the size box, and this is the object inside this box. <laughs> Literally nothing else inside this box. <laughs> like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Why didn't they use a mailer? Your packages all get bent and stuffed in the mailbox. Ugh. No, I don't like that. My mail lady's really good about making sure that the... If it doesn't fit in the mailbox, she brings it to the porch, so. You're waiting on a chart from 123 Stitch from December 30th? They're not usually that slow. It must have, like, gone out of stock or something. Target does that to you all the time. <laughs> oh, his hands across the sea. Oh, oh, that's right. You've got all the mail. Mm, mail strikes me are hard. Your two-year-old just said, "I'll be right back. Not go anywhere." <laughs> At least cardboard boxes are. You know, I usually like burn them. <laughs> Okay, so this is something somebody recommended to me. That is not going to show up here. I do that every single time. I've never tried it, but it was recommended to me and the reviews were good. So, how, what am I supposed to do? Adults. It says use for relief from occasional stress. So... Not like my normal, everyday emotional stress. <gasps> She's been really nice to our mail. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, it's been postal strike in... I know that in the UK, this postal strikes keep coming and going. Like, it's not... You've given it to a dog before? Okay, yeah, she said that, um, that a lot of people use it on the, for their pets. But a lot of people use it for humans, obviously, too. It says, adults, take four drops directly on tongue or four drops in water and sip at intervals. Repeat as necessary. Well, I don't have water. No. I could put it in this. Mm. Would that be a bad thing? Yeah. Why? Awesome. It's still liquid. can't open this. Huh? Okay, Kaylin wants me to give it to her. You heard of something utterly preposterous speaking of dogs? I'm ready to hear it. You use rescue and remedy for anxiety. They also do it in these like little sweet things. Oh! Alara's interested in, uh, Alara, are you interested in this product? Look, I'm really glad to hear, like, other people having used it here. You heard of a Labrador Retriever that won't swim and won't fetch. <laughs> um, that's very funny. Because Retrievers I know. are, like, the 
they should do that both. You like a roll on from plant therapy called calming the child. You know what? I probably have a essential oil blend that I probably should use more regularly. I'm not very good at it though. I'm not good at remembering. So I'm literally getting no stitches in right now. And I'm okay with that. But at the same time, it's so funny to me. You had one job, dog. So as long as you don't tear the jobby thingy up top. Maybe tweezers. I think there's a pair up there. We're working on it. They come in a yellow tin. I think there are black currant flavor or orange and elderflower. I have a black currant one. They just get weird that do work some of the time for me. Yeah. I think, um... I think that's why like a lot of these products they're it's for the occasional because in order to deal with like the constant you kind of have to you need a different approach like you just do packaging is so hard I'm hurting people I think over like All right, honey bunny stitcher. Thank you for being here. Blue skies outside and allegedly snowmageddon is imminent. How my weather is high, literally and figuratively. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> We definitely don't have snow here. Period. We had snow yesterday. We had snow. Don't have blurry sky. It wasn't yesterday. It would have been Saturday, right? Oh yeah, it was Saturday. Cause Sunday you got the cinnamon rolls, and I was like, but I can't have any. It's still in the fridge. Yeah, I still can't have any. In Colorado, Colorado's weather weather is confused. It's the calm before the storm. So apparently opening this means higher anxiety trying to open it in order to decrease your anxiety by using it. Kaylin's opening it still. It does say on the tin not to take too many close together as it can cause laxative effects, but it fails to say how many is too many. <laughs> Don't you love vague instructions that you get a guess at? I got a, um, <sighs> headache, I have a prescription headache medicine medication um and it is fantastic because it actually works quicker than normal headache medicine for me which takes forever to work um well i'm opening it while taking out the plastic <laughs> um but when I was talking to the neurologist who was prescribing this to me, he said that, um, like, it's one of those medications that can be addictive and have complications. So, like, he's like, so don't take it too often. And I was like, sorry, you can't be that vague. Like, please just tell me what that is like what is too often <laughs> seriously <laughs> she got it open um <laughs> you volunteered 
Uh, but I was like, don't give me vague instructions. Like, how much is too much? And he, he told me, like, probably no more than once a week. Which is fine. I don't take it that often. I try. I just, on that one, I wait until, like, I need it. I need that particular one. Otherwise, I try not to take medication or I try to take something that is better for it. Anyway. Kaylin, you don't want me to put it in here, but I'm going to put it in here anyway. Okay. How many drops? Oh. Four? Yeah, four drops. Four drops. Whoa, look at this fancy, like, oh, it's like curved. How do I? Oh, down here on my shirt, I can show you. You, okay. You got a case for your AirPods and there was zero instructions. You just had to wing it. One, two, three, four. Like, repeat as necessary, but like, what does that mean? Okay. Whenever you feel like it. <laughs> Whenever you feel like it. Uh, okay. I got put off going to the doctor about anxiety after the last time I went and got really patronizing doctor who told me it was all in my head. I don't like doctors like that. It is not <laughs> helpful at all. That reminds me of the sugar-free candy reviews where they're like, I had six. Six. <laughs> we went to a doctor due to asthma. I'm feeling very down and I proceeded to have an epic anxiety attack for like 30 minutes. Oh man. You know what? People who say that mental illnesses or things like that are in your head are really dumb. Just because it's mental doesn't mean, like, it's, you're not making it up, okay? There are probably some people who make it up, but for the most part, people are not making it up. People do not want to be having those problems. Oh my god. To his credit, he was unfazed, but he was beating a doctor, so he's seen and heard it all. Yep. All right, Michelle. Enjoy your, I mean, enjoy your work meeting. Have a good meeting. Huh? Michelle says she likes me more than she likes her trashy reality TV show. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I like the tiny beaker the two of me both come in. All in my head. Thanks, Captain Obvious. <laughs> Can you please tip? Stop hitting this. Thank you. Tell me something I don't already know. Yeah. Like, we don't need help thinking that it's just all in our heads. Like, we've already tried to convince ourselves that we're having problems on our own. Okay. You just hanging out here? Uh, yeah, that's all I got about the room. Okay. Thank you for bringing the package. You're good. I'm easy now. Take care with you. We could save the deductible if we hear it is all in your head. Yeah. Because you think you were there for a fun day out. I know. It's just... Some doctors aren't equipped. And I, I, I also believe that... It could be the, the age of the doctor, too, um, and when they went through medical school and how much they keep up with current science. The cat barged in yelling her head off. <laughs> That's funny. My cats can't come in my room. They scratch up my furniture. They don't scratch up anywhere else. Just here. I don't like setting up, like establishing myself in new places. 
And I think it's because I don't like dealing with people who think that I don't know what I'm talking about. Another reason why I don't therapist, you know? In the future, if you have to go see a doctor, are we requesting anyone but him? Yep. I don't blame you. I mean, like, you're not going to get the care you need if somebody's going to treat you like you don't know, like they know better what's happening internally than you do. <laughs> Doctors are mo supposed to be there to help explain what is happening to you, not tell you what's happening to you, not necessarily. Maybe give it a name, but not tell you you're making it up. Then we have people fearing that they're hypochondriacs when they're nothing like a hypochondriac. Obliged to give your house tag your hand full of dentist treatment. <laughs> my cats don't like treats. I mean, my cats are old now. They're 14. Yeah, they're 14. But, um, they, one of the cats likes yogurt and green smoothies and fruit. She loves melon like cantaloupe. The other cat likes onions and french fries. So, not normal cat treats. They took your blood pressure and said it's a bit high. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it would be right now. <laughs> Those are weird cats. <laughs> they kind of are. Kaz, maybe tell us she loves the gravy off of wet cat food and treats. Also, you know, hunting mice and eating them. That's funny. My my cats aren't like really hunters of any kind. Pip, my black dog, she she likes to hunt and track. Like she she will spend a long time figuring that out. I'm also fairly positive that all the holes in my backyard are due to her smelling an animal underground. Do you have, do you experience claustrophobia or is it just, is it something different? It could be moles, it could be voles, it could be mice, it could be, probably not rats. She's caught one once. Oh, it could, there could also be rabbits. There have been times when we've had rabbits in our yard. That's not happened for a very long time because it's hard for them to get in our backyard now. 
Um, but very recently, a couple weeks, end of December, anyway, it doesn't matter. She was like outside for like an hour. And I was wanting to go to sleep and I finally went out there to see what she was doing. And she had some little rodent that she hadn't killed, but had collected. But it was dark and wet, and I wasn't really sure it's small. Not really sure what it was. You almost fell asleep during an MRI. Okay, well, so not claustrophobia. Mostly fear of who is going to open the door. You know, trauma means you don't always understand why you're being triggered to, into some response. Nor does it mean that you can do anything about it. trauma from violence short story hyper vigilance yep I understand the vigilance I do not do well with violence really in any format <laughs> I do not like to watch dark things or read dark things and I do not recover from them very easily You said meow and your cat yelled meow. <laughs> you have a very vocal kitty there. <laughs> you either said something very offensive or very exciting. That didn't sound like a neutral response from your cat. Or both. <laughs> or both, Bex. <laughs> Could be very valid for a cat. She's very demanding. You joke at your hearse emotion. Okay, I say the same thing about Pip, my black dog, is that she can be so needy and need like pets constantly. 
<laughs> it's so funny. And I'm like, I'm her emotional support human. <laughs> I say the same thing. Dogs have owners, cats have staff. Have you guys ever heard your cat say hello? I mean, not as distinctly as I've heard on videos. One of my cats, sometimes at night, will get very vocal. It doesn't happen very often. It happened last night. And I'm not even sure what she was complaining about. But she was definitely complaining about something. Very loudly. I think she was right outside my bedroom door, too. Probably not asking to come in. Probably just trying to tell me that something was wrong. And she wanted it fixed right away. Your cat said it took a video of your cat and he was screaming what sounded like hello. <laughs> oh man. I can imagine cats just coming out with insults at us and we're just sitting there smiling going, you're such a good kitty. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Your dog argues with you. <laughs> Oh wow, what a mix. Coon hound, huh? Hound has always kind of been on my list of I don't want a hound. When Pip decides that she needs pets, and she'll want pets for a long time, nonstop, she like flips your hand up and nudges you and whines at you until you give in. And then if you stop, she's like, ah, ah, come on. When I play the piano, it's very interesting, the reactions of, of my dogs, because one dog will like lay down and go to sleep like she'll come under the piano and just lay down and listen to me and sleep the other dog will make it very hard to play because she's jabbing me with her nose so that i pet her it's like a hair hanging out Ninety five pounds. He's equal to ten dogs. <laughs> Especially the little ones, like the palms or the chihuahuas. The hair is still here, but I can't, like, see where it is. <laughs> it's weird.
His appetite doesn't have an off switch. Pip doesn't like to eat her food until she feels like she's guarded it. Her food is never in any danger from any other animal. It's just like the thing that she's decided is her job. When I take her on road trips, she does not eat. Um, she does not eat until we've arrived at our destination and even then, most of the time, she refuses to eat. But, like, I was at my, my friend's house in Utah. And she would, like, eat dried pasta off the floor. And it was, like, the end of the garden season. So there were still, like, tomatoes and cucumbers out in their garden. She would, like, go out in their garden and eat tomatoes and cucumbers. But not eat her own food. During the driving, like, she'll want to eat, but not her food. She'll, she'll search around the ground and try to eat, like, rocks and other hard things that aren't edible. Oh, no worries. You're here when you are and not when you can't. actually get some stitching in while my brain takes a moment. I listened to a podcast um, of somebody who had experienced a, 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 what is it, TBI? Um, hi Vera, how are you? Um, traumatic brain injury. She was in a car accident and lost all memory. Um, she still had some ability, like she could speak and things like that, but she... She said for the amount of memory that she had, she didn't know she was in a hospital. She didn't have words for that. <coughs> oh, man. Um, excuse me. Whew. Um... There's two different kinds of amnesia, and she had both of the two kinds. Anyway, she's like, she didn't know what a stethoscope was. It could have just been like the, um, like a necklace for all she knew. Like it could have just been the fashion. 
and and why did I why was I thinking of this oh I remember in that podcast she said that something that she likes teaching people thank you <laughs> something she likes to to help people become comfortable with is um, white space when speaking or in conversation or in a lecture or something like that is that having moments in where nobody is saying anything allow space for the brain to rest for it to kind of process a little bit and orient itself to like the new things that have come in and knowing how to go out from there And I found that very interesting. Sometimes we feel so much pressure to like talk, which I don't on these lives, by the way. I don't feel any pressure to like fill up the noise, I mean the space with words. I just fill up the space with words because I just, it comes, it spews. But yeah. Um, hi, Agnes. I in some ways feel better and in some ways do not so an overall better is okay I have so many options of things to consume right now I'm <laughs> I have like three different drinks and Cheerios. Like, which one do I choose? The one with the anxiety medication. What it? What is it called? Rescue remedy, natural stress relief. That thing. think what stood out in that idea of like learning to be okay with the blank space is that sometimes we fill it up so much that we don't know what it is that we are thinking if we're always trying to fill it up So everybody who is hanging out with me here, <laughs> like, it's okay if there comes a point where you're like, we need a break. <laughs> I will not be offended.
think what it feels like to me in the silences are companionable silence. Because we have these moments of like constant talking and then moments of like stillness. And it's just kind of this natural ebb and flow that I really like. Is there a specific place I buy my fabrics? No, but it kind of depends on which fabric you're talking about. Um, I like to consolidate my purchases to as few places as possible. So if I can get something on one, two, three stitch, I will. I like uh, if you're talking about this fabric, or are, do you want to know about like any fabric? Or just yes. <laughs> yes, just tell you all the things. <laughs> Before I tell you too much information, <laughs> let me find out what information you want. Rachel have fun playing with the kids You know about your sample fabric places. Um, okay, so this fabric I bought from Heaven and Earth Designs. It can feel hard to get a piece large enough for a super size without getting a ton of fabric. So I got this from Heaven and Earth Design. I have also purchased from 123 stitch though so um this easy count fabric i also have fabric from i don't know if it says i bought it on a sale like it was very discounted This is all my fabric right here. It's not that much, huh? Um, Mystic Fabrics. So this is from Mystic Fabrics and it's like a huge It's a huge piece. It says it's 60 by 55. I'm pretty sure that's inches. 60 inches by 55 inches. Um, apparently it's 32 count. Which means maybe I don't have the fabric. I thought this was 28 count. But apparently I bought 32 count. Which tells me that I need to be buy fabric for my Rivendell. Because this is 25 count, I think. 
I don't remember now. I'm pretty certain I have 25 count and 32 count. So there's a lot of places that you can get, especially if you want the gridded fabric. There are a lot of places that you can get it from, but I don't, like, if I can get it from 123stitch, I typically will, but if I see it on sale somewhere else, obviously I got that too. Guess who's going shopping, guys? <laughs> Me. <laughs> I'm gonna go buy some fabric for Rivendell. What's the sad face for? The PDF for the chart is 17 pounds. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, like the shadow lane charts, it's not really cheaper to get it PDF versus print. The computer ate your comment. You canceled your one, two, three stitch order for the the hands. I know which one. We just talked about it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Good. I discovered that now, and I wouldn't have until probably like the week before, because I wasn't. I probably wouldn't have thought to prep it before. Yes, yes, that the sampler, I do remember that. Um, I like that they're very transparent about, like, their expected shipping date so that you can make those decisions. Like, you can decide whether or not to cancel your shipment. I also really like that when something is back-ordered, unexpectedly um, they will they don't charge you for it until they have it in stock and then they email you to say hey do you still want this we have it now and you can choose yes I still want it or no no because I got impatient and I got it from somewhere else I don't know like <laughs> you know, it's not like it's not like we have a lack of patterns to work on, right? Like we have a lot of projects. It's just sad when you really want to work on one that you don't have. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to know why sometimes that just happens. Like, was it a, like, what kind of an error does it happen? Now you have bougie French silk and pretty fabric for you don't know what. Sounds like it's time to go pattern shopping. Time to pick something else that will go nice on that pattern. Or I suppose see if you can get it from somewhere else, but that may be hard. 
you work normally on 36 count for your sampler I'm trying 40 count now it's a lot smaller it got hard on your eyes I've only stitched on 40 count once and I was trying I'm I tested um, doing one strand over one thread tent stitch it's so tiny where is it here it is time for lunch and shower Alara, thank you so much for all the things. You know it. Oh, it's 12? Wow. It is. This is 40 count, one over one. Tenth stitch. Okay. Here's my hand. Look at how tiny that is. <laughs> like, it's so little. I love it so much. I'm planning on doing a full coverage chart on 40 count. One over one, half cross. Ten stitch. Love you, Alara. You use mag guys? I, I don't. I haven't had to yet. The 40 count was still very accessible to me. So, like, I haven't, I haven't had to do anything yet. I think I was saying, though, yeah, because um, you were just saying the PDF is still expensive. I, uh, cause Chatelaine was the same. I remember m my Chatelaine pa pattern. I got off one, two, three stitch, um, like on sale, it was a lower price. And he, um, excuse me, um, my mind just derailed, unfortunately. <sighs> oh, yeah. And then I learned that you could get the Chatelaines as a PDF from their website. And I went to go look at the price, and I'm like, well, they're not any cheaper. Like, they are the same, they're at the same cost, whether it's print or not. So... And I guess I can't really fault them because your work as a designer is the same whether you're releasing it in print or n not in print. It just seems like the cost of paper should place some value in the PDF being cheaper. You started your reindeer on 40 count. It's small. <laughs> Did, are you stitching it over one or over two? My year in the woods is um, on 32 count, over two, so. Three pound difference between the physical chart and the PDF. I don't know. It seems like it just seems like between paper, like having to print it and paper and that labor and then not having to ship. It just seems like there should be more of a difference, but at the same time, you do still want to honor like the designer and their work in a chart. 
I don't know. It's kind. Of, it's hard to kind of know. Like, I'm not sure that I know where I stand on that. One over two, 40 count. Yeah, you can do full crosses on 40 count if you do one over two. I specifically on the flower one, um, I specifically on the flower one wanted to try the tenth stitch because I was wanting to do it on a full coverage. Oh yeah, if they're spiral bound, then normally, then that it, there definitely should be a, more of a difference than three pounds. You said that was still like 17 pounds, right? Like, it's unfortunate. Okay, I have 460 stitches in here, so that's 110 more to go. You just finished Rejoice and Evermore by Brenda Gervais, 36 count, 2 over 2, lovely colors. Nice! And Christmas Garland by Blackbird last year as well, 36 count. And then you get an email of the pretty new releases. <laughs> and maybe one of those new releases fits your pretty silken fabric, right? I've only stitched on 36 count. I think I just have one project on 36 count. And I do like it. feel like I'll pretty much try most anything, but um, if, if I'm doing a beaded project like Bella Filipina or Mirabilia, I like 28 count hand dyed fabric so that I make sure I don't have like bead crowding issues. Welcome back, Perelska! I've got a little over a hundred stitches to go, which could apparently take me another hour at this rate that I keep talking. Krista ships quick and packages the orders up so nicely. It's very pleasurable. It's always nice when you find a shop like that, a business. You tried Dancer on 32 count and you did not love that. You wish she sold scissors? I need more scissors. I have two and I could use at least one more. Twenty eight count, fourteen count. Twenty eight count I think is like if I had to just pick one to go with all the time, I'd pick twenty eight count. But I like the other count too. <laughs> it's 
So it's a good thing I don't have to pick. My, um, girly, you know the piece I was working on last night, the black one? Um, that's 32 count. I liked that. For Bab, sometimes you have to go smaller count. Uh, yes. Unless you can't see, in which case, I totally understand not doing it. That's why I'm doing a 40 count full coverage, is because... This is my planned Lord of the Rings wall, and now that the camera is so close, you can't really see all of it. Like, this is my planned Lord of the Rings wall. Not that it, this is going to be the configuration, but this is roughly the size that they would be on, this is 25 count. These will either be 25 or, tw this is 28 count, but the other two are, will maybe be 25, maybe 28, depends on what fabric I've got for them. But this piece has as many stitches it has more stitches than my super size piece. And, but I didn't want it to overwhelm this as a whole. I didn't want it to be like, bam, here's the map and then here's all the other work. And so putting it on 40 count scales it down to this in comparison to the rest. Like that is legit my reasoning for trying 40 count is because in my vision the overall weight of all the pieces I didn't want it to be too much it needed it needed to be right <laughs> Maybe it's the fabric, the basalt splash. So I've never stitched a Barbara Anna, but I like a lot of her work. You can, there's a site with several of her designs free and legal. Cyber stitches, stitcher, cyber stitchers. I don't think I've heard of that one, so I'll have to go look that up, that, that site. fun that a lot of the designers like if you want to get to know their style you can um like the freebies help you get to know their style and if that's something that you want to like stitch more of for some reason you're the deity of legal freebies <laughs> you know the places to go Girly, have you narrowed it down to two? Which two are you looking at?
for this dash enhancement. <laughs> I do have several feed beasts saved on my computer. I had to clear out lots of old ma emails to make room for your Google Drive stash of PDF files. <laughs> um, I think I have three different online cloud platform things. For different reasons of my life. <laughs> so that I have room like that. My patterns live on one drive. You were looking at home in the mountains before you knew I was having that start. And bird, butterflies, and blooms world map. I'm pretty certain I know which one that one is. You've talked about, you've brought that one up before. Okay. It, it is the one that I was thinking it was. That one. It's Purdy. Seven twenty five by five eighteen. That's a a decent like three hundred and fifty or so stitches. Three hundred and fifty thousand. <laughs> I forgot the thousand in there. Solve a problem like Maria. Butterflies, birds, and map geography for you. It is beautiful colors in that one, for sure. Like that, it sounds like that one brings together all of your like favorite things. You're also a Lord of the Rings super nerd. <laughs> oh, so you're trying to decide which which part of you do you go with?
Um, they can be used when you buy DMC, unless it specifies otherwise. However, their coupons have gotten down. Like, they're not as good anymore. A lot of times it's like for single items and not for like your whole order. So it doesn't help very much. But Joann's does sometimes have DMC sales. I don't see those too often at like Michael's or Hobby Lobby, but Joann's will. How long will it last to get them done? <laughs> you know, I guess it depends on if you want the finished piece or if you want the process of stitching on it. Chrissy, you're stitching on the ranger. Cross country by page. Nice. I I really like that depiction of of him, of Strider. Aragorn, LSR, all the names. You prefer twenty five percent off your whole order. Yeah. Yes. I think most people do. <laughs> But, I don't know, it's been a couple years or so then, since they did that. Your Joann's shut down? That's sad. I don't go to Joann's very often because it's not, it's not the closest store to me. Like, it's a good, I mean, it's a good 20 minutes away. Which doesn't sound 20 to 30. I'm not really sure, but that doesn't sound very far, except Hobby Lobby is like 5 minutes from me. It's very close. <laughs> and there's a Michaels that is like 15 minutes from me, so. Hobby Lobby tends to get my in-person business if I go somewhere. And sometimes Hobby Lobby does have their floss on sale. It, it just doesn't happen very often, I don't think. I know that I've bought a whole bunch of floss and then was like, surprise, it's on sale. Like, oh, cool. Glad I was doing that today. You see a 15% off your whole order coupon on their site. Nice. Hobby Lobby doesn't do coupons. They only, they have like a sale cycle um, so it's very predictable, but it's, um, sorry, my, like, anxiety slash nervousness is acting up really bad today. <sighs> they have a sales cycle, and... So some things I like every other week, some things are every three weeks, but, um, but it's nice because you kind of know that if you can wait like a week or two, then, you know, yarn's going to be on sale or something. You think 
You have Michaels and then small stores that will sometimes carry floss. Yeah. Like, I have a Walmart, but they don't carry very good floss selection. You just, I just needed one color, one color. <laughs> Girly, I'm trying to think of what Megan does. Megan lives in Norway. I know that she gets stuff shipped to her family a lot, and then when her family comes to visit her, they bring they bring things. But I know that she orders from other places too and gets it shipped to her. I just can't remember from where it is that she ships or gets orders from, I mean. Versus when you could walk long distances and would walk there. Oh. <laughs> like you put all that effort into the walking and then like nothing. <laughs> Not what you needed. That was kind of what I was thinking inherited. Like, I'm trying to think if she orders, if Megan orders from UK sites or French sites. I was just talking to Megan this morning about a year in the woods series. She's looking at getting fabric. It does take a lot of steps, but, like, it might be worth it. <laughs> I've never lived that close to, like, a... There's, there's like, one needle workshop close, close by. It's still, like, 20 minutes of driving, but... But it doesn't have a lot of cross stitch stuff. It's it's very much needlework, needle canvas. You found a Hello Kitty chart. <laughs> we have a few yarn stores that are walking distance, but no across the stores in Toronto. Yarn is much easier to find. I am glad that we have as much access as we have. I mean, not in all places, obviously, like 
girly struggling in Norway here, but um, why didn't you buy chocolate when you were in the store? You badly want to have it. I'll give you some of my chocolate, girly. I've got a whole bunch over here. And I'm not eating it anytime soon. Loves Hello Kitty. Highways are stressful even for people who do drive. I don't like city driving at all. You often fantasize about a need to workshop within bicycling distance. Can you imagine? No, I can't. Like, that would be a lot. Like, there's a sort of quilt and sew, but that's not good enough. I, I don't quilt, so I don't know what. There's probably more quilting than cross-stitch, though. Because a lot more people quilt than cross-stitch. We're going to change that one floss tube video at a time. Cross stitchers unite. I sent the bourbon health game. Yes, there really are far more quilting options. Oh, welcome back, Richter. Hi. <laughs> Amy, at least Crossfit decided to name their videos knitting is oh. <laughs> That's true, there is not a knit tube. Or a quilt tube. I don't think so. They just, I mean, it was just funny because, you know, we've got floss tube. There's like book tube and actually, I'm not sure that there's others that I really know of. They just kind of label it like quilting. <laughs> Yeah, but I wonder how many, like, non-floss tubers might ever come across floss tube or that term. Probably never. And they're like, like, are we flossing our teeth? Are we doing the dance? Knitting YouTube podcast. Okay, I was just thinking like knitting knitting podcasts I've heard. How long have I been right? My it is my goal to finish. <laughs> um 
I keep talking. I've been live for four hours. Three hours and 58 minutes. The thing is, is if I keep stitching without being live, I'm not occupied enough. Even watching floss tube videos right now is not enough. My mind will swirl with thoughts and the deep hurt will come out and the pain and the tears and the anger and the all the things. So um this is me keeping myself occupied. <laughs> With whoever is here at the moment. <laughs> I'm just trying to, I, I work on this until I get to three, 570 stitches in a day. Or I finish the thread after that point, so. You can only handle so much enabling. <laughs> Your extra, I've see, I, I've never, I've only watched crochet and knitting videos to learn how to do something. I know, like right now, I know I feel like I'm not crying right now, like I'm not, I'm, I'm accessing the happy part of myself, but I just know like being left to myself right now, no, not good. And I'd be stitching during this time anyway, so. I'm just bringing friends along for the ride. You watch the grocery girls when they first started, now they are celebrities and you don't get it. tons of whips for all of them. <laughs> I think it's just that like the other fibers aren't like I know how to do them and I enjoy them and I like seeing things that are done. But it's not really like it's not like my focal niche, you know? My first love is cross stitch. And and so that's that's just what I engage in the most. Knitted every day for two years, so you got pregnant and lost your mojo and gone back from time to time. I pretty much knit when I have a project that I want to knit, and I crochet blankets. Like, that's what I do. <laughs> oh, gosh. You're happy you found me? Aw, girly. Being alone a lot is very hard. Um, I get it. And you don't always have the ability, uh, capacity, the resources, whatever it is to like be with other people. Like online is a great medium. This is a fantastic medium for that.
I'm not sure I know what fruity knitting is. The Remedy stuff has the ingredients. It says active ingredients. Um, rock rose, clematis, impatiens, cherry plum, and star of Bethlehem. Inactive ingredient alcohol. Thanks, Island Girl. Better is relative, but in many ways it's better. <laughs> uh, yarn and stuff is so spendy now, I've just decided to revert to my first love, which is thirteen. Splashed out on some Lego. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's nice to create, but like, I have plenty to create in cross-stitching. And I'm happy with that. I'm fine with that. This community took place when COVID hit, and it's so much more now. Yes. Fruity Knitting is a podcast. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> I was like, is that a technique that I have nothing, know nothing about? Any crafter that is haughty at all you run screaming <laughs> all essential oils and a kick <laughs> an inactive kick Richter it's an inactive ingredient <laughs> um, it's homeopathic and it does say each 5x so each of those are at I can't remember my homeopathic information. 5x, like 5 times strength? I can't remember. You love the pandemic stitch from Long Dong. You don't know if you'll ever finish mine. I don't have that one, and I really enjoy watching other people stitch it, but I have no interest in stitching it myself. This bottle has 90 calories, but it's taken me like three days to drink the whole thing. So, can I just say like that's 30 calories worth? It's like when calorie counting really matters <laughs> to make sure that you're getting anywhere more than you did the day before ridiculous you got it for three then you ran out and bought the paper pattern <laughs> you were just so excited about it you use a few tea trees and peppermints for headaches and stuff i i have a lot of essential oils i do have like a peppermint one that i use for headaches they sometimes help but it depends on what kind of headache i've got i really like diffusing essential oils because a lot of um artificial scents pretty much all of artificial scents like can really bother me so i really like essential oils a lot. I'm not usually bothered scent-wise scent by them. You bought a lot of long dogs when you went to a meal or shop near Dunk and Minnie or Sam Club's stuff too. Like, you really like samplers. <laughs> I just have my one long dog, but I really like it.
I have 30 stitches left. Thir 30 stitches will get me to 570. <laughs> oh, gosh. It doesn't normally take me this long. It just takes me this long because I'm talking to you guys. That's all. Like, I would be stitching on something else if I had finished this already, you know? Some of your free pattern stuff is stuck in internet heaven. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, that's nice. She showed you how to do the long stitch and stitch on linen and things. That's nice. That's the community for you. You just can't get to them. <laughs> well, that's kind of frustrating. I always hear like if you don't have your digital stuff saved in like three different locations then it's not really saved I just realized I think I know what this other package is. It's interesting how our taste of stitches evolves over time. Yeah. I think this package <laughs> it's a hot water bottle because I'm extra cold right now because I'm not eating very much and it's winter. I don't own one of these. Look at how cute and fuzzy it is. He's so cute. He's so fuzzy. So like, how do you use this? Instructions. Fill the bottle three quarters full with warm tap water only. Let out excess air before threading in stopper. Thread stopper into bottle and make sure it fits securely. Test for leakage. Do not use boiling water. Do not microwave. Use only plain water. So using warm tap water only, like, makes this warm enough? Because, like, I kind of want this, like, right here, like, tucked into my shirt right here. That's what I bought. I kind of forgot about that. Backups for your backups, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, girly. I know, I'm I'm not great about archiving and putting them in good spots either. I'm trying to get better, but... And I think that having cloud storage helps, but... Still, I feel like there there's probably a lot that I would miss or lose that's on my laptop that's not anywhere else. I'm at 556. That means 6 four, 
14, I can do math, 14 more stitches. Or until I finish whatever thread I'm on at that point. And it's only taken me four, over four hours. <laughs> Oh, yep, there we go. I have a lot back up now, yes. And like an external hard drive. I've definitely heard of people who have basically like three external hard drives and uh, keep them at three different physical locations. <gasps> Yay, Michelle, you got to your 75%. One whip go down, one to go. Yes. Technically, I can say I'm done with both my whip go goals because I did work on my second one yesterday. However, I do want to finish the whole butterfly section, so I'm going to keep working on it. That's exciting that you're at 75%. Like, do you have a an end goal? Like, do you want to keep working on it and finish it? Oh, external drives absolutely can die. And cloud services can also lose all your stuff. So, like, digital is definitely not perfect. You need to figure out storage. It says full and make videos. It's very frustrating. Yep. You're going to try and do 1% a day on the other one for four days, then move one to what I should be doing each day. <laughs> you want to finish it this year? Two more months before you finish it. Yeah. That's exciting. Richter, this is my first year doing whip goal. I've never done it before. Um, and I kept it really easy on myself and just said that as long as I worked on it at all that month, then I could count it as being done. I like to complicate plans, so it's not even like it's my only plan, right? Last year, I got a lot of my smalls finished. <laughs> and so now I'm kind of back to like, I have a lot of mediums and larges and they just take a lot more time to finish. Cute patterns by Maria. I see a lot of her patterns. Knitting a scarf. The pattern is one row lace scarf by Pervig blog. You really do have the bead on all the free things.
there's nothing wrong with that, like having a focus, for sure. Ukrainian designer, so happy to support. Yeah, I think that's probably how she came onto my radar. Is And she's got a lot of cute, cute things. <laughs> like she chose her name well, Cute Patterns by Maria. All right, as soon as I finish out stitching this thread, then the live stream will end. <laughs> like, it's been a while. I love her season houses. Those are like my top favorites of hers. So I know exactly which ones you're talking about. <laughs> the heart. <laughs> so cute. Man, I need to get Twitch going. I need to get in there and set up like channel points and stuff. And then we can party on during 24 hours of CrossFit this weekend. <sighs> and those emojis can bounce across the screen and be little bundles of joy for everyone. All right, that was 595 stitches. It, that took me four hours and 23 minutes, but we probably should say at least an hour of that. I wasn't stitching, I was just talking. At least. And opening packages and... <laughs> Goodness. There's like a something circular going on here that I don't know yet. But that's it's cool. And this this really is her dress. You can I can see it from above. Um, but it's so ethereal that you see what's behind it and it doesn't look at all the same as the rest of her dress. 
so exciting. And then I, this is the side of the ladder. So one ladder, well, one leg, the other leg. So, so good, I love it. I always love it. Okay, friends, thank you. A basketball. <laughs> that would be so random for this chart. <laughs> It's possible that it's a bubble because we do have like bubble, 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 bubble. It's possible that it's another bubble, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Thank you for hanging out with me. I super appreciate it. Um, maybe we'll be back later, but I don't know. Like it's already after one. How is it after one? Um, I'll just have to see what I do with Kaylin and stuff, so. Yes, Richter. There will be plenty this week. Eventually, I won't go live as much just because I won't need the distractions so desperately. But right now, I do. So, I'm going to lean into it. And I'm so grateful for all of you. I will see you guys around. Bye, Michelle. Bye, Gurley and Richter and everybody. Because there's a lot of you that I don't know who are here. <laughs> Let's see, where's my button? Here he is.